All right, so in general, what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply or we're gonna add a lattice object in here, and then we're gonna apply a lattice modifier to this object and use the lattice in order to adjust the shape. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna start by just doing a shift A inside of object mode. We're gonna add a lattice object in here. What that's gonna do is that's gonna add this box, right? And so basically in its simplest form, um, whatever is inside of this box once we use this modifier is going to be affected by what we do to the box. So we're gonna start off and we're just gonna move this up and we're going to scale it just a little bit to make sure our object is completely inside of the box. And so in its simplest form, the way that this works is this lattice is an object that we can adjust over here, which we'll talk about in a minute, but then we're going to apply a lattice modifier to the object we want to change. So in this case, my default dog model. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my modifiers and I'm going to add a lattice modifier under the deform options. So the lattice modifier is going to come in here and the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna ask me to find an object to link this to. And so we wanna link this to a lattice object. So in this case, we want to click on the little eyedropper right here and we're just gonna click on our lattice. And so what we've done is we've basically linked this object to our lattice um, inside of Blender. So now, if we were to select the lattice and tab into edit mode, now if we make changes to this object, so let's say for example, I was to select the vertices right here, you can see how this is going to deform my base object based on where I move this. So we can use this in order to create deformations inside of our model. So there's a lot of interesting applications to this, but you can use this along with like the scale tool. If you want to, you can scale things in or out. You can also rotate things, like really any kind of movement that happens inside of our, uh, or that happens to our control cage is going to be transferred into our object right here. And so one cool thing about the lattice modifier is because this lattice is a lattice object, you can go back in by clicking this little button right here, the object data properties with the lattice selected, and you can actually adjust the resolution of this lattice. So what that means is that means we can add subdivisions to our control cage in here by adjusting the resolution. And so we can use that in order to um, give us more options for things we can deform with our object. So for example, let's say that I just wanted to make the center of this object narrower and nothing else. Well, what I could do is I could add another W split right here and then now if I tab in here, I could select just the cage objects in the center. I could scale this in and you can see how what that's doing is that's applying this deformation just to the center of my object. And so you could also use this to add like a twist to an object or something like that, which we'll talk about in a second. All right, so real quick, I wanna take a look at the difference between uh, more detailed geometry more detailed control cages. So what I've got here is I've got three cylinders, right? So I've got one cylinder that if I tab into edit mode, maybe I'll just jump into wireframe mode actually. So if I turn on wireframe mode and look at this, I've got one object right here, which is just um, one set of edges running between the vertices on the top and the bottom, right? And then I've got a second option over here where I've added some loop cuts, but I still have a single rectangular control cage in here with no cuts in the middle. Then over here, I have a model that has the detail cuts on the inside as well as a more detailed control cage. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between the three. So the first one, let's say that we have the lattice modifier applied here and then we adjust this lattice, right? So let's say I scale this out right? You can see this is adjusting. I rotate it. You can see how basically what's happening is the edges are turning along this object, right? But there's no real detail in here um, that's really affecting this, meaning that all you're going to get is you're just going to get a straight line between this bottom piece right here and this top piece right here, right? There's nowhere for the geometry to deform and for the modifier to really like, like make any changes in here. So you can see how this is good for like simple shapes, right? But over here, let's say we were to do the same thing, right? And let's say, let's make sure we're linked to the right lattice. So let's say we were to adjust this lattice right here. So we were to scale this out and then rotate this. 
So notice how this is very similar, right? What you're getting in here is you're getting basically a straight line running from bottom to top, but this is split, meaning there's more geometry in here that this can kind of work with and adjust. So you're getting a slightly better shape, but not really very much. Um, so what you really need to do is you need to split an object up into more geometry and adjust your control cage to give you more control. So basically what we've done here, let me move this over just a little bit, is now we have this lattice object in here where if I tab in here, let's say I scale this out, notice how it's only affecting the geometry up here at the top, right? So if I was to scale this out, same thing. Scale this out, same thing. But notice how what this is giving me now is this is giving me much more control over where these are being deformed. So for example, if I scale this in and out, it's affecting this location right here, not necessarily the location down here. So instead of getting edges that are just running from the very bottom to the very top, you're able to control this more um, by doing this way instead. So I could scale this out again. Notice how this gives me a lot more control over adding like ins and outs and other things like that inside of my object. So I can really use this with more geometric detail as well as more lattice detail to really start making some changes in here. And so that's gonna get even more interesting a little bit later when we talk about proportional editing. But just know in general, you're gonna get more control if you add subdivisions to your lattice and subdivide your geometry. So you don't want your geometry to look like this, you want it to at least have some details in here so this modifier actually has something to change where the control points are. And so now let's take a look at an example with a little bit more geometry in it. So let's go in and let's add a, we'll go with the UV sphere for this one. So we'll move this over, we'll move this up. So this UV sphere has a lot more geometry in here, so it's probably a little bit better example. So let's say we were to add a lattice here, so shift A, add lattice. So let's duplicate this real quick. So we'll just move this over right here. And so let's start by deforming this object right here. So we're just gonna select this lattice, tab in here, and let's go ahead and let's move our control cage up like this, right? So we're gonna move this up. Maybe we'll rotate it a little bit. It's a little hard to see unless we maybe turn on wireframe. So you can see how what this has done is this has moved this geometry up and it's twisted it. Right, but we don't really have a lot of control on the result that we're gonna get here. So for this object, we're gonna take our lattice and we're gonna add some additional detail. So we're just gonna bring this up so that these objects move, or so that this maybe has four subdivisions in it, right? So now what this gives us the ability to do is this gives us the ability if we wanted to, to maybe let's say that we wanted to take the in, inside of this and scale it in. Right, well we could take these additional cage objects and we could scale them in and maybe I'll put us back in material preview mode. We could scale these in and we'll just do a shift Z so that these just scale inward rather than outward. But notice how because we have more control inside of our control cage, this gives us more control over what we can do inside of our model. And so let's say we were to take this whole thing and let's duplicate it over here. So adding detail to your control cage is gonna give you the ability to control this more. Well then, things get really interesting when you start adding proportional editing in here. We haven't really talked too much about proportional editing on the channel yet, but basically what that allows you to do is that allows you to adjust other objects based on the movement, um, basically based on their distance from the object that you're placing in here. So right now, for example, if we were to tab into edit mode and take these objects and rotate them along the Z axis, notice how you're really only getting the twist from this point up. Right, so you're not able to twist this whole object after you've deformed it in. However, if we were to turn on proportional editing just by clicking right here, and then tapping the R key to rotate this and locking it to the Z axis, notice how we get this ring around here, right? And the ring changes based on the size of the circle on the screen. And I'm able to adjust the size of the circle on the screen by scrolling my mouse wheel up or down. Well, notice how when my uh, circle is really small, nothing outside of my selection is really being affected. But if I scroll my mouse down and I make this bigger, notice how I can affect things proportionally down below. So what that means is that means that I can adjust how much this is adjusting along with my top piece to give me a lot more control over the twist 
that I'm adding to my object. So by adding that proportional editing and then adjusting how proportional it is, you can really create some interesting things using this modifier. And then one other thing, you can also turn these off. So once you've kind of made your deformation, you can set these so that you can't see them inside of your viewport anymore if you wanted to come in here and start making changes or something like that. So you can definitely do that. If you wanted this to be your final geometry, so notice how currently this is actually a modifier, right? So really your original shape is just a sphere. If you wanted this to be your permanent final, then what you would do is you would just click on this object and just click on apply. And so once you've applied this modifier, it's no longer linked to that lattice. This is the actual geometry that's in here. So then you could come in here and actually edit this um, based on however you wanted to do that. So you could make your changes, other things like that. Notice that when you apply a modifier that is final, you can't go back and make any more changes. So make sure that your geometry is what you want it to be before you do that. All right, so one last thing. So we've got this object right here, right? Let's say that we only wanted our lattice modifier to affect some of this object, right? So let's say, for example, that only the very top of this really needed to be selected by our lattice modifier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a vertex group. And so we can select a vertex group by tabbing into our object, and we'll just go to our front view, I'm gonna wireframe, and we'll, then we'll select these vertices right here. So let's say these top three rows. Right? Well, what we wanna do is we wanna create a vertex group. So you can do that by going over to your object data properties and clicking the plus button right here. And so this vertex group will basically allow us to assign these vertices to that group. So we'll just call this top part right here. Then we'll click on the button for assign. So what that means is that means that now, if I was to click on this and click on select, those vertices have been assigned to their own group. Well, what that means, and we'll go back to material preview mode, is now if I was to apply, let's add a lattice. So cursor to it's selected, lattice, scalar down just a little bit. So let's say we wanted this lattice to only affect that vertex group, right? So what we would do is we would go into our object, you'd add our modifier, and when we set up our lattice, we would still apply it to this object right here, but we would select that vertex group, which is now gonna show up in this list. So if I select this, what that means is that means that now this lattice is only going to affect that top part group. So if I was to make this change, let's tab into edit mode. Let's adjust this. Notice how now only the vertices that were in that vertex group are being affected. So you can use this to affect only certain parts of an object if you wanna do that as well. So note that the ability to adjust just a vertex group is also contained inside of this modifier. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you know about this modifier? Have you been using it? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new blender content every week as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys